Hello everyone, well in today's video I wanted to take the time to talk about how to unpack and repack a Brother knitting machine. This will apply to the punch card or electronic versions and this video is primarily focusing on the standard gauge models but it's pretty much the same even if it was a chunky model. There's just certain parts that aren't included with the chunky machines that will be shown in this video. So. First of all, we want to start by unpacking the machine by having the machine on a flat table or if you're opening the machine just to check it, um, have it lay on a flat surface, of course, such as the floor. Um, make sure the, um, the logo on top of the case is facing upwards so the machine is the correct way up and that the, the text is readable towards you. Sometimes they're in the centre of the case and sometimes they're off to the the right side or maybe the left side, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, usually the electronic ones have the, the branding there in the middle of the case and the punch card ones will be off to one end. But it is slightly different for different models. So there are two latches on the back of the machine. So I've just moved the camera so you can see. There's a latch here and a latch here. We just lift them up. And sometimes the, the latch there will spring forward out the way, but if it's still attached, just push it out the way and then push them back down. Do the same with the other one. And then the case will be free to release. Now, if you're using the machine, you would have the machine situated at, towards the edge of the table. But I'm just showing you here, this is why I pushed it back so it fits better in the frame. But you lift up to, at the back of the case like that and pull it towards you and that will release it which reveals the knitting machine itself and the parts and components in the case lid so usually there is an accessory box built in or separate to the machine if it's a separate accessory box it will sit in sort of this area here and um, it'll sit on this back rail here and just fit snugly on there it shouldn't move about if it has a built-in um, accessory box you press this latch in and that reveals the different tools and accessories when the machine's packed away there's usually a um, carriage lock which um, to remove that you just turn the the thumb screw there anti-clockwise and you can pull it towards you and lift it up to remove it which frees the carriage. Now these are the typical various bits and pieces that come with a Brother standard gauge machine. You have this which is called a needle pusher. It's um, toothed on one side and flat on the other. That's The flat side would be for bringing forward every needle on the machine. The tooth side is for selecting every other needle. That's what that's for. You have a set of three transfer tools. There should be a one by two, a one by three, and a two by three. So those are your transfer tools. You'll have a latch tool, which basically just has the same as the needles on the machine, a hook and a latch. They typically give you a crochet hook, two different um, sides to it. There's a small crochet hook on one end and sort of a pick tool on the other. You'll have a bottle of oil for lubricating the machine. Two claw weights. If it's a chunky model, you'll usually get four or six of these, I believe. A little tub with, um, well, it should have wax in it for waxing the yarn while you knit. This one's um, empty. You get two clamps for clamping the machine to the table. Some nylon cord, which um, machine knitters call ravel cord. That's used um, for separating two pieces of knitting. You get a brush, cleaning brush. You'll typically get this device as well. This is called a plating feeder. Um, that's what that is. 
And this thing that I've been holding in my hand is just an empty packet. This usually has the spare needles and um, the tapestry needle included. But um, I've used all mine, so that's empty. Now, I do apologise about the lighting in this video, by the way. Um, I'm using artificial light because it's uh, night time at the time of filming. But hopefully you can see everything okay. So, do check the manual for the exact accessories that come with your particular model um, because they are slightly different but most of the parts I've just shown you are pretty much of a muchness between the models. Now the accessory box, whether built in or a separate one, they usually have little diagrams moulded into the plastic where the parts go. Like this one you can see is a little picture of the clamp. So that goes neatly in there like that. There's a little slot here, which is where the oil goes. Down here, there's a little diagram of claw weights, so they go down in there. There's a little picture of a brush in this one. So we put the cleaning brush in there. And also the little plating feeder fits in there. And then of course, your spare needles, if you still have them, will slide in there as well. In this gap here and your transfer tools will also slide into that little gap. The cubby holes may be in a slightly different place on the um, different models and the separate accessory box but um, there will be much of a muchness in where everything will slot into place. I can just go there and if you've done it properly the lid will close or fit on very easily. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to force it. It should fit on very easily. So there are several components in the case lid. We have the two extension rails, which store at the left end of the case. In the center of the case here, we have this little spring loaded clip. You just push it down with two hands and it will lift up and then you'll be able to remove this device, which is called the sinker plate that attaches onto the front of the carriage. And um, at this end here, this is the lace carriage. Some models, if they're especially punch card models, um, there'll be a wire on earlier versions, there'll be a wire housing like this here um, that you'll have to lift up to remove that but on later models, they just um, clicked in like that. You press the button in and lift it forward and that opens up. This long piece at the front is the cast on comb. Once this um, wire has been opened up, you'll be able to grab the comb from one end, lift it up and pull it forward to release it from the um, case. Now if this is an earlier version, it'll be two separate cones. It'll be a long comb and then a sharp piece. But the later models have this two built-in combs like this. They just fit together. See? They fit together like that. You just slide them in. Making sure, of course, the teeth are facing the same direction. This piece here is called the tension mast. To remove it, you pull forward here and lift it out of that hook, which is holding it in the case. And then you push it forward from here, which releases it from this hook, and then you'll be able to remove it. If you want to see how this opens up, you lift up on this part here, the yarn guide, and then you lift up on this part here, making sure it doesn't get caught on this short one, which always happens. And that will click into position. And the final thing to do would be to lift the back piece up there 
and there'll be a hole on the centre of the machine somewhere that the comb fits into like that. Models that don't have a built-in row counter, by the way, around this point here will be where the row counter is stored. And then um, you would pull that forward to remove it and it would fit onto two um, locking tabs on the machine in the same way that it went into the case. The extension rails, as I mentioned before, are located here. And to remove those, you press them together and pull forward and slide them out. That's what these look like, these long U-shaped pieces. And they fit onto the ends of the machine. They just slide into the end of the machine like that. And that gives somewhere for the lace carriage to rest when um, it's not being used. Because when you're lace knitting, you use both the carriage and the lace carriage. So if you're using a wide amount of needles, there needs to be somewhere for this to rest. So now repacking the machine, starting with the extension rails, make sure you have them both together and that they are both facing the same direction. You want it facing this way to the case. So how you're looking at it here, turn it that way and that's the way they go in. So there's a gully at the end of the case here and this end of the extension rails paired together slides into that first. You squeeze them together and they click in to the silver part there. That keeps them in position. And you see that the bowed shape should be flush against the case like that. Next to go in is the tension mast. Once you've removed it from the machine, fold the triangular yarn guide down. Push this yarn guide down and then fold these long wires all the way forward until they click. There we go. They didn't click because I had my hand over it so it stopped it from clicking, but they did click firmly. They shouldn't lift up easily. They should be clicked in place. Now, looking at this side of the tension mast, we have this rectangular piece next to these two dials. There's this piece. Under there needs to slot. See how it sticks out there? It needs to slot into this section of the case here so that metal tab there needs to slide underneath this metal part here on the case lid it goes in at quite a steep angle and pushes down and that stops it from moving making sure that short piece hasn't got caught up make sure you push the um, stem of the mast underneath this hook here and then finally hold on to both the wires and this long rod and clip it into that first hook there not this second one this first one and that is the mast held in place the sinker plate fits back in this direction you see where those two loops are it sits at an angle in there and it'll sit flat if you have the single comb that couples together make sure it's connected back together once again so that the teeth are all facing the same direction if you have a two separate comb affair make sure they're both situated in the same manner that i'm going to show you now so on the case, there'll be a little lug here where the comb sits and at the end of the comb, one end or the other, there'll be this little cutout and that has to fit into that lug. You see that? Just there. And then it slots under that hook there at the other end. And if you have the two separate combs on an older model, there'll be another place to put that second comb and that'll also have a lug on it like that. So you'll line it up in the right place. Once the comb's in, bring this wire down, press down so it goes under those two 
tabs there and that's everything securely in the case. The only other thing to put in now is the lace carriage. The front of the metal edge of the lace carriage sits under these two pips in the back. Again, put that in an angle like that. Press it down and press the button in at the back so it hooks under that metal bar so the lace carriage isn't going to come out. Bring the carriage back to the left of the machine and put the uh, carriage lock, who it's not already on, in the little hole there at the end. Can you see that? There. It sits in that hole and then bring the carriage up to the the loop on the bar and push it underneath that thumb screw and turn it clockwise to tighten it up so that, that isn't going anywhere doesn't move in transit. So to put the case lid back onto the knitting machine, the lip of the case here needs to slide under the front of the machine. So in the same way that we took it off, offer it up to the machine at an angle, push it forward and it will sit flat. You shouldn't have to force the case lid closed, it should fit on very easily. If you have to force it closed, something isn't installed properly in the case. Everything's engineered to fit very specifically inside these cases, so if it doesn't want to shut, don't force it, because it's not correct. And finally, lift up these latches, make sure the bars go over the hooks on the case, and push them down. Same on the other side. Now, with these old brother machines, if you're going, they're very heavy. If you're going to carry them by the carry handle, make sure that when you pick it up you support it underneath as well because the these machines are 30 plus years old and um these handles could become brittle and snap and you wouldn't want the machine crashing to the floor or on your toes so yeah if you're carrying it by the handle just make sure you support it underneath another thing if you're transporting these machines make sure they are well packed because these plastic end caps will completely smash if um, the courier drops it. So you need to make sure you well pad the ends of the machine, both sides, and make sure it's well wrapped because, I mean, these machines weigh probably 10 to 12 kilos. So, you know, if they're not packed properly and everything isn't packed safely inside the case, um, something's gonna get broken. So just make sure it's um, well taken care of because they're getting on a bit, these old brother machines. So anyway, hopefully that's helped you out. And uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video.